Konnichiwa, everybody. Today, I'd like to talk to you about responsive web design and adaptive web design. And I'm going to explain the differences between each. Now, the interwebs, as we really know it, began as a small pond of ambiguous servers in the 1990s. Dial-up internet access was cumbersome, and it took a lifetime just to load a web page. Now, in the 21st century, the interwebs have become a vast ocean of data. We can surf the seas at the speed of fiber optic light from the comfort of our own homes or at our favorite fishing hole via smartphone technologies. The speed and bandwidth of today is amazing and it's only gaining momentum. We must be able to adapt to changes in browser technologies as there are many new devices out there that must be supported. These new technologies do not just surf the interwebs, they swim with the hunger of great white whales consuming any data in their path. These new technologies can drive the Captain Ahab in you to grow angry and lose focus, but you must grab your harpoon and sail into the heart of the storm. Seek out new ideas and learn new skills to keep your head above the water like Ishmael to a Twitter whale fail. Adapt, respond, and overcome. A list apart is one of the first places I always turn for guidance in the industry. I found a great article by, and I'm going to butcher this gentleman's name, Ethan Meraki, uh, again, the butchering, uh, titled Responsive Web Design. And I have his article right here. Uh, Ethan's article really helped me get up to speed on the subject. Ethan explained the where and how to start using these new techniques. Um, now, I really suggest, you know, you read the article. It's a great article. It's going to help you out a lot. But also, go ahead and buy Ethan's book because this really was the uh, what gave me the whole idea and gave me a really great understanding. It's pretty inexpensive. I just grabbed it on my iPad it was for like uh, 10 bucks or something. It's not listed here for the iPad, but you, you get the idea. Just go to the bookstore and purchase it. Uh, the URL, a book apart, products, responsive web design, if you're going to buy the uh, paperback, ebook, or, or whatever. Uh, the, ba the basic thing, the main thing that Ethan talks about is uh, the ingredients for responsive web design. And uh, it kind of has a little bit of the contents listed here, but uh, the, the main three things are a flexible grid-based layout, flexible images and media and media queries a module from the CSS3 specifications. So we have a flexible grid-based layout, flexible images, and media queries. So these are the ingredients that uh, we're going to need to make responsive web design. Uh, I'm going to just touch on a few of Ethan's points, but again, read his book to get the full message. Uh, it's a great book. It reads really quickly. It's like 236 pages. It's fast read, but uh, wow. So CSS3 media queries, I'm going to go into that. Media types are something that most of us are already comfortable with. We use media types all the time to call screen and print style sheets. Uh, CSS3 media queries are a little different. These are used to call conditions of media features. We could call things like orientation, device aspect ratio, min width device, and many others to accomplish our goals. CSS3 Media Queries gives us a lot of freedom to style for present and future devices as web browsers change with time. Uh, now, here is uh, some examples of CSS3 Media Queries being used to call different devices. These ex are, um, are good examples of adaptive web design. So we can see here that media screen only, uh, screen, so there's your uh, media type, screen. Uh, min device width, 320, max device width, 480. Uh, I wonder what that's for. Uh, smartphones, we could say, oh, okay, this is going to be the orientation for the landscape. Obviously, you know, the iPhone 320, uh, 321, max width 320, portrait and landscape. So we could call different style sheets for the portrait or landscape once we uh, orientate the device. It's awesome that you have that control. Same thing with iPhone. Portrait and landscape. Uh, we have min device width 768, uh, max device width 1024. So then we have iPad, uh, landscape, iPad, orientation for uh, portrait. Then we go on to where we have uh, desktop and laptops. 
Uh, large screens, 8, 1824. Yeah, that's a large screen. And then we have something here for iPhone 4s. So uh, iPhone 4, obviously the resolution uh, for the retinal display. So WebKit Min, so we're using this WebKit uh, special called uh, Pixel Ratio 1.5. Min device pixel ratio 1.5. So great, this is how we could use to call the iPhone 4. So let's uh, let's talk about from adaptive and let's go to responsive uh, web design. Uh, so uh, oh, and first let me just touch that you know in the code that we could see the min and max devices, and then it's you know again th this is an easy way to define the browser's dimensions and style appropriately for the things like the iPhone. Uh, iPad and, and their orientations and state, you know, to state how how these are going to be styled with these media queries. So, again, adaptive web design. So, responsive web design. We're going to go back to Ethan's article and look at his example. So, in Ethan's article, he goes down here and he, he has a few examples. He starts going into and explaining his examples. So let's just go ahead and look at his example. So this is his example at alistapart.com, D, responsive website, EX, EX for example, site larger. So when we size this down, we notice, hey, there's a few changes going on here. So this is going to look great for, say, an iPhone or some other mobile device. We expand a little bit. Maybe this looks good on an iPad or uh, some other junky template or a uh, 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 table device. And we go out and we get something more for the screen. So, uh, like I said, go ahead and go to his example. Try resizing and, you know, play with this a little bit. And you'll see how it best fits for that screen size. Now, some of Ethan's code is sized by percentages. The formula for calculating your desired percentage div size is kind of simple. So, uh, let's look at what he has in here. So, uh, let's look at something... Uh, easy to understand like uh, the footer. Okay, width is 65.9375%. What does that mean? He has something commented out here, 633 pixels by 960, right? What is that? So if you want to start your design at a base of 960, then think that 960 will be 100% of the width. Pretty simple so far, right? 960 equals 100% of our width. Say you want the base width of your footer to be uh, div uh, like say 633, like Ian has here, 633. We'll divide uh, 633 by 960. Will give you a uh, width of 0 0.659375. So we're just dividing this by this, and we get. We'll move this decimal. 0.65 nine three seven five but that's not what we see here so what we're doing is and what e Ethan is doing is just moving that decimal point over two and we move it over two because it's by a hundred and voila we get a percentage so we have our sizes six five point nine three seven five so that's our actual percentage uh, now think about that we'll, well we'll look at the media queries in his example he has a max width of Scroll down the page here. So a max width of 600, max width of 400, and a min width of 1300. The max width property sets the maximum width of the elements. Min width property sets the minimum width of the elements. We can see that once we fall below 600 pixels, the columns stop floating and become one column to better accommodate for smaller screen size. So here we see that all these classes float none. So once we get to that, it's going to float none, and we'll go back to his example. We have these floating, and now, boom, they're all not floating, and we have one single column that's easy to view on a mobile device. Uh, Ethan is also using max and min widths to state different sizes for other divs, then controlling the size by percentages, the, the, user, sizes, uh, the user sizes the browser, right? The percentage technique is not just for users who resize the browser, but more importantly to respond to different browser sizes and different devices. So this is great that the user could do this, but think about all the different devices. Again, this might be for uh, your iMac, 
This might be for your iPad. This might be for your iPhone or your crappy Android device, right? Nothing wrong with Android devices, but, you know, they're crappy. Um, so in Ethan's example, uh, again, these are adapting to set browser sizes of 1,300, uh, 600, and 400. Ethan's example is responding to any changes in those browsers' sizes via percentages, thus making his example future-proof up to 1,300 pixels, which he has stated right here. I'm in with the 1,300 pixels, and he has some declarations for that. So let's think about mobile web design, because that's really the uh, catalyst of, of these kinds of schools of thought. A good combination of adaptive and responsive web design makes a healthy website, obviously. Device, device browser sizes can, can and, and they will change over time, think about it. So therefore, using percentages frees us from declaring a new CSS3 media query every time a new priority browser size is declared. The genesis of these new concepts may have been mobile web design. Uh, the iPhone was really the beginning of easy web browsing. From that point on, you know, who knows what will be next, but we will be ready thanks to responsive web design techniques. Again, we could see how easy this is to be resized. And if you think about different devices that are in the future, well, we have everything from 1300 below 600 and 400. So this covers a lot of different devices. And again, this will make Ethan's design example here future proof. Uh, so that's it for today. Again, uh, Go to Ethan's website, uh, or Ethan's article on Alista Part. Here's Ethan, uh, alistapart.com, authors, M. Uh, I'm not going to try to say his name because I'm just going to butcher it. And read some of Ethan's articles. You definitely need to check out Fluid Images because that's uh, a meat ingredient in uh, this. And Fluid Grids and Responsive Web Design. And buy Ethan's book. Great book. Quick read. Uh, a lot of good info. Thanks again, everybody. And um, write me a comment. Give me a shout out. And I'll uh, hit you later. Appreciate it.